This logic analyzer and protocol analyzer is just, this is far beyond anything I've had in the lab before. Oh man, this is gonna be neat to play with. Oh, <laughs> this is everything you get in the case. And yeah, it's got all the goodies. We've got our jumpers. We've got a B-type USB 3 cable and our logic analyzer. <laughs> Look at all the pins. Oh, oh. It also sent me protocol simulators as well, which I assume we can use to fake some different protocols. And these are industrial grade lab boards as well. Super nice units. And I am so fortunate to have this. Ah, enough fun with the video. Let's get it over to the lab and get it on the bench. In previous videos, we've done a fair bit of work with these cheap USB logic analyzers as well as various other logic probes and reverse engineering tools. We even designed this in a video and had it fabricated at PCBWay. This was a breakout for doing logic probing and reverse engineering. You can get the design in my GitHub and have it fabricated at PCBWay. They often have specials on circuit board fabrication as well as some really cool stuff in the community section where you can find other projects like this and have them fabricated. PCBWay supports these videos so I can bring you free to watch content every week. Over to the workshop, I figured the best way to show this off is to just put it to work. This is my Scent VR project that I've been working on lately. Basically, we have an OLED screen, we have some fans to disperse some scents into the room uh, so that I can smell things in VR. And a really cool thing we can do here is we can debug our data lines if we had a problem, say, with this display, which I did recently. I had a dead one. And we can just see what the logic analyzer has to say. Okay, what I've done is I've teed the zero plus in on two lines and ground. I teed right into the SDA and SDSCL lines from our OLED, that's our serial data and serial clock. And we know it's working because we can see things on the screen. But if this wasn't working, we can use this to debug what's going on really, really easy. This is the LAC Pro software that they gave me with this. Uh, it's free download. I'm assuming you just need to have their hardware to make it work. So what we want to do is we can do an acquisition here, but let's set up the uh, decoder first. So we'll go into add protocol decoder and we're going to do I squared C and we'll hit next. So uh, our lines we know are going to be A2 and A1 on in this case, uh, because that's the pins I've hooked them to. Timing, uh, we'll leave that not active. Uh, right bit ACK, uh, format, let's leave it default, and we'll leave everything else default. And we don't want to stop when an ACK appears. We'll hit next, and we don't want to delete anything else. But we don't have an acquisition yet, so we can go ahead and acquire one. We're going to do 64K depth at 100 megahertz. There is that. That's at 10 megahertz. Uh, 10 megahertz is plenty for this, and we'll just hit go. We should be able to do a single capture. Boom. Attention, the washing machine has finished the laundry. Pretty cool thing you get here. You get three visualizations. You get a long-term timeline at the top that you can actually zoom around and jump right to areas of interest with the cursor. You also have a timeline down below that gives us the same options to zoom in, zoom out. Uh, we can zoom over here or you can use your cursor keys, but this gives us a, a good look at our capture on the timeline. And this is very similar to what we've used other programs here on the channel. But you see at the top, we've already done our decode, which is super, super cool. But you can also just go to right to a packet list. And this I've never seen before. Uh, pulling this up, we can see the entire dump decoded for us. 
So our timestamp, our bus, our data in hex, so a 0x40, 0x40, 0x20, 0x1f, this is all in hex. Our dnax and our ax, and whether it's writes or reads, which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, 0x3c, if you're familiar with that, we can search for it. We search the web, I squared C addresses 0x3C. And guess what? Here's our display. We know that that is the I squared C bus address that we're using. That's handled by the library by default for us. That in a nutshell allows us to zoom around and analyze a signal. There's way more features here than I'm going to know how to use for some years. Uh, like any tool, this will take me some time to get my head around all the extra functionality, but for the basics, you want to decode an I2C signal, see if it's there, see if it's accurate. Well, here you go. You can break it down as much as you want, take as many captures, import, export. But the other cool thing is if I just press the button on the top of the unit, it also does a capture for me. So you can kind of do it hands-free when you're not at the PC. And I really like that. that that's just something that appeals to me. But here we've got quite a bit of activity in this case. Lots of activity on the bus and yeah, pretty cool. Uh, my sketch is working and my display is working, but if it wasn't, I could debug it. Pretty cool.